Happy New Year to everyone. This is Damon Tennant from the Get Your GED Now Test Preparation Series. And I figured how better to start off 2015 uh, than to start it off with one of the more difficult types of math problems that you're going to see on the GED test. And so here I am at GEDTestingService.com looking at one of their practice tests. So this is directly from the folks who actually make the test. Uh, so it is a very reliable source uh, to prepare yourself for what you're going to see on the GED test. Uh, so let's jump in. Uh, a scientist is studying red maple tree growth in a state park. She measured the trunk diameters of a sample of trees in the same month every other year. The tables show the data for two of the trees. So we have tree one and tree two and in each of those data sets we have a column here telling the year and then a corresponding column telling what the trunk diameter was in that year uh, for both of these trees. This is the final year in which she will collect data, which her data collect when her data collection is complete, she will predict future red maple tree growth. So this is a three part question. So let us go ahead and get started off with the first two parts uh, with the part with the first part. The scientist plots the data for tree two on a coordinate grid. She begins by plotting the data for year three. So we're going to see uh, tree two and then we're looking at this data line here year 3 and also year 11 so we're looking at that data line there for year 11 what are the locations of the two points on the coordinate grid that's the question and then they're directing us click on the grid to plot the points so the first thing we're going to do is come down here and look at the chart and we're going to see on the x-axis we have the year and on the y-axis we have the diameter so we're going to go take our data line 3 and come all the way up here and make sure we stay on our data line 3 to 12 that's the trunk diameter that year so that will be our point there and then all the way down here at year 11 we're going to come over here on year 11 and come all the way up making sure to stay with our data line uh, to 14.4 and that's somewhere in here between 14 and 15 probably not all the way half but somewhere in there and that is how you would do that one now this next one here um, is is uh, part two of this question and uh, what I want to show you is what's involved in figuring out this type of question so the same data is here so we've already read that so here we're reading that the scientists uh, on the second question the scientist creates an equation that models her data for each tree so that she can predict the diameter in the future so complete a linear equation that fits the data for tree 1 so we're going to be looking at tree 1 where X is the year and Y is the trunk and the diameter in inches click on the variables and the numbers that you want to select and drag them into the boxes so you could drag whatever numbers you see and you can put them here and there those are not correct but I'm just showing you how this problem works so now let's go ahead and look at the formula sheet which on the GED test you would be able to do this and you would see the formula for a linear equation or the slope intercept form of the equation of a line y equals mx plus b okay so we know that that's the formula that we're going to use because they direct us that way now I'm going to come over here to my scribbler board and I'm going to write out that equation y equals mx plus b now coming back here to the question so we need to put y equals m x plus b but we don't know what m is we don't know what x is and we don't know what b is yet so let's go ahead and find m so the m is the slope and the equation uh, the, the formula for finding out the slope is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 so what are those points well let's come back and pull some data so we know again that we're looking at tree one so I'm just going to go ahead and take the first two points year one and 18.6 and year two and uh, three and 19.2 so 19.2 would be the second y point 18.6 would be the first y point year three would be the second y point and year one would be the first y point 3 minus 1 of course is 2 and 19.2 minus 18.6 is going to give us 0. 0.6 
okay and then 0 0.6 divided by 2 is going to give us 0.3 so we know that the slope uh, is going to be 0.3 so let us come back here and uh, look at um, uh, uh, our selections here so we're going to go ahead and put in 0.3 for the slope now now that we've discovered the slope we can go back and look at the formula sheet and you know so we're just see if we're tracking y equals mx plus b yep we're still tracking so now we have our m our slope and then our x we're just going to put that in there because this is going to predict the future so we don't know what year she's going to be looking at so we're just going to let that go ahead and be x now we still need to find out b so let's come back over here to my scribbler board so we found that out to be 0.3 and X we're gonna let that X stay X and that Y is gonna be Y because that's predicting the future year and the future growth that we don't know but B we do have to find that out so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and find out um, what B is and the way we do that is we're gonna plug in two for instance points for X and why and again we're going to use that just by using the first points um, of year one um, so what I'm going to do is going to get a clean page here and uh, y equals mx uh, let me write that a little better mx plus b and so we're going to put in um, 18.6 for year one as a for instance point. We're going to put in 0.3 for the slope. And then we know that that for instance point for X is one year. So we're going to put that in for X and then B because we're looking for B. So what we're doing is we're trying to find out what B is and we're doing that by plugging in points that we know are for instance points of this particular line and prediction that we want to do. So now we have 18.6 equals 0.3 plus B. And if you spent any amount of time with me, you know as we are using our COPA method, we are going to subtract 0.3 from each side and that's going to leave us B by itself and that's going to give us 18.3 if you need some more direction with that take a look at my package of videos and it gives a thorough explanation uh, of that process so now we know that B equals 18.3 so we're going to come back over here and we're going to plug in our answer so the formula for figuring out uh, the future so we can put in any year and based upon this consistent change of 0.3 uh, every year we can put in uh, 15 years we can put in 20 years and it will give us the output y of how we can expect the trunk diet the trunks diameter to be now there is still yet one more uh, piece to this question and again as I said what better way to start off the new year than to start it off with one of the more difficult problems you're going to see so now we're going to look at th this data we've already read so in year 13 the scientists will put the tree wrap around tree one so we're looking at tree one to protect it from 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 the winter snow the height of the tree wrap needs to be 45 inches so we see that here now we see what kind of shape this is shaping up to be it's a cylinder okay but now the wrap is priced by the square foot to the nearest square foot how many square feet of wrap does she need so we need to find out how many square feet of wrap uh, does she need the scientists to complete this project so we're going to go to our formula sheet and we see the formulas that they give us here and so we're going to look at the surface area of a cylinder and so the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r uh, times the height plus 2 pi r squared okay now you have to know a little bit about the cylinder here okay because we're looking at the surface area so that gives us the complete surface area of the cylinder but our two tops are open and where the two tops are open it's actually a circle so we want to use that formula but we what we want to do though is we want to subtract this part of the formula because we're only looking for the wrap we're not looking for those two parts as if it was a 
a, a pure enclosed cylinder. So we're going to subtract that part out and we're just going to use the 2 pi r times height to figure that out. So now let me go back to my scribbler board here and get to a new page. And so we're going to get 2 pi r times height. Okay, so we already know the height is 45, so we can go ahead and put that in. The radius, um, we have to go back and look at the data. The radius uh, in year 13 is 22, well, actually the diameter, that's diameter, is 22.1. So the radius is going to be half of the diameter, which is 11.1. And so we're going to go ahead and put 11.1 one in there and put a multiplication sign in there and then pi we know is 3.14 a little multiplication sign in there and two times all those things so we have two times pi 3.14 times radius 11.1 .1, times height 45 and all that together gives us 3100 and 36.86 as the surface area now but we still have to come back and make sure that we're comparing apples to apples because we have the information is given to us in inches but they're asking us for the answer in feet and so this is something we have to be very careful of on the GED test you know because sometimes they'll give us the information in one form and they'll ask it from us in another form so they might give it to us in gallons but ask for it in pints so here they're giving it to us in inches and they're asking us for it in square feet and so we know a square foot uh, so if we just had a square here and a square foot, we know is one foot by one foot. But in this case, we have to look at inches because there's 12 inches in a foot. So 12 times 12 is 144 inches. So we're going to divide that 144 inches out so we can convert that final measurement to feet. And then 3,136.86 divided by 144 will give you 22 square feet so we come back over here and then we have our multiple choice and we plug in our answer so again this is some of the more difficult material you're going to see on the GED test having to manipulate formulas having to use uh, linear equations and the such um, but it is a good preparation and then you also see the three kinds of questions you know and they're more than that but you know you can be asked to plot information on a graph and then come over here and ask to you know fill information in um, a drag and drop type question and then come over here and then get the good old-fashioned multiple choice this has been Damon Tennant wishing you a very happy new year uh, with this very uh, new test um, in its second year going into a second year and if you need help make sure you visit me at www.mygedlive.com where I'm offering the GED challenge which is simply I provide you with the information that you need to be successful and you accept the challenge by if you are willing to do what is necessary to pass this test it's just a way to end the procrastination and get serious about passing the GED test in 2015 thank you